I'm Jess. I'm here to walk you through how to automatically update your Elasticsearch index using Node.js and an Azure function app. I wrote this article automatically updating your Elasticsearch index using Node.js and an Azure function app um, just to kind of walk you through how to get started and making sure that your data stays up to date. When I first started working with Elastic, I found that my data would quickly go out of date, especially when I was looking at a dashboard. So I needed to figure out a way to make sure that my data was up to date. Maintaining an up-to-date Elasticsearch index is critical, especially when you're dealing with frequently changing dynamic data sets. For most of us, an index is our primary point of where we put data into Elastic. Um, so this video will guide you through a method that you can use with Node.js and an Azure function app to make sure that your data stays up to date. We'll first load the data in with Node.js and ensure it remains current using an Azure function app. Um, the data set that we will be using is one of my favorites. Um, it is the Near Earth Object Web Service um, provided by NASA, and it's a RESTful service that provides you detailed information about when asteroids are coming close to Earth. Um, it is a really fun data set, and I'm really excited to walk you through how to make sure that your data stays current. Before you get started, um, you will want to make sure that you have Elasticsearch set up. Um, this example uses Elasticsearch 8.1.3. Um, but any version higher than 8.0 should work for this purpose. Um, you also will want to make sure that you have the latest version of NPM and Node.js installed. Um, this tutorial uses um, version 21.6.1 um, and NPM 10.5.0. And you'll also want to make sure that you have an API key to use the NASA APIs and an active Azure account with an access to create a function app. Um, you'll also want to make sure that you have access to the Azure portal or the Azure command line interface. We are now in the command line where we can start getting started, um, getting everything we need to get up and running. So we will first want to um, make a directory for introduction to data loading and Elasticsearch with Node.js. And then we're going to want to change directories into that and use npm init um, to walk through what we need to get started. So from here, we get a wizard that kind of walks you through all of the starting points that you need um, to go ahead and get started with your um, node application. So now we can actually go in and start installing the required packages. We'll be using Elasticsearch um, to connect to the Elasticsearch endpoint. Axios to make um, some API requests, and we're going to be using .env to make sure that our secrets are safe and secure. So from here, we can go ahead and run this. So we're going to want to set up to write our code in a secure fashion. So to do so, we're going to want to create a .env file. So to do that in our terminal, we can actually write touch .env to create a .env file. Inside of our code editor, um, we can now um, set up our Elasticsearch endpoint. Um, for me, this is my Elastic Cloud endpoint. And from here, you can also set up your Elasticsearch API key. And you're also going to want to get a NASA API key and put that in your .env file. And when you are ready, you could press save to um, securely store your keys and tokens for your application. I want to do the same thing that we just did for our .env file. We can set up the file that we're going to write code in, and we can do this in our command line by typing touch floating data into an index.js. So now we're going to want to be in our code editor. I am in VS Code, but you can use any code editor if you're choosing. And I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the code that I wrote. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to require the .env package. And this allows us to load our environment variables from a .env file and load them into our application effectively. From here, we're going to want to import the necessary modules. So we're going to be using the Elasticsearch JavaScript library um, just to connect and authenticate to Elasticsearch and load everything into an index. 
From here, we're also going to be using the Axios package, and this allows us to make HTTP requests. And then from here, we're going to want to um, create a couple of a couple of variables for our environment variable. So from here, we're going to want to get our keys and tokens. So we're going to want to get our Elasticsearch endpoint, our API key for Elasticsearch, and our API key for the NASA APIs. From here, we're ready to initialize the Elasticsearch client with um, some API key authentication. So this allows us to authenticate and connect to Elasticsearch um, by creating a variable called client. And then from here, we can actually create a function to fetch the data from the NASA API. And this allows us to set the URL that we'll need and then get today's date and the date one week ago, format the dates effectively, and then set some parameters, which is what we're going to need to make our API request. From there, we can use Axios to uh, make that API request by passing in the URL and the parameters that we just set. And then from here, we can return kind of the raw JSON object that we um, get from the API or catch any errors that may come up. Um, and we'll print out you know, what the data says. And if there's any errors fetching the data, we'll let you know. And then from here, we can actually create a function that will allow us to just make sure that our data gets into the structured format. Um, by doing this extra data cleaning, we can actually just make everything a little bit smoother for the upload process. So from here, we're actually just going to go in and iterate over all of the near-Earth asteroid information. And then from here, we can actually simplify the object structure by just kind of passing it into um, a dictionary. And then from here, we can actually create just a simplified object that allows us to kind of make it easier to work with. And then from here, we can actually create another function that allows us to put our data into an index. And so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, just make sure that there is an index um, that we're looking for. So for this, we've named this JS video search lambs. And if the index exists, we can actually um, just go ahead. And if not, we can actually create a new index with the proper mappings. And then from here, we can create a body, which just allows us to kind of pass in the index that we're looking for and just the doc ID. Um, and then we're going to get that from that object that we just cleaned up in the previous step. And then from here, we can actually do all the data loading that we need. From here, we're going to have one main function that kind of ties everything together. So it will first fetch the data, transform and structure the data, um, and let you know how many records are being uploaded. And then if the data is indexed properly, it will let you know that. Or if there's no data to index, it will also let you know that as well. And if there's any issue, it will let you know that the data has failed to load. Um, and then from here, you can actually just run everything. So now I can actually go in the command line and run the code. So let's do that. Let's type in node and then do loading data into an index.js. And it looks like 138 records were uploaded and our data was indexed successfully. From here, we can actually run a query to the search endpoint inside of Elastic's dev tools. And we can sort this by close approach date. I often with this data set like to do that, especially when uploading data. It just makes me realize, you know, when was the last time this data was uploaded. Um, so yeah, let's run this query. And now we can see that we did indeed load data into the index and we have a date that corresponds with the day of recording this um, as the most recent close approach date. So in the last step, I uploaded my data to an index once, but that will quickly go out of date. So to keep my data uploaded on a daily basis, I have created a Azure function app, which allows me to update my data at a time that I specify using the timer trigger. So from here, I can actually go into a code editor on the Azure front end. And this allows me to um, have code that looks very similar to what I outlined in the previous step. 
I connect to the Elasticsearch JavaScript library and Axios, and I retrieve my environment variables. I authenticate to Elasticsearch. And then I do kind of, you know, I figure out when the last time I updated is. And I used a very similar query to what I used earlier um, in the previous steps. So when I showed you what I was running in my DevTools console, I'm using that same query just to kind of figure out, okay, so when was the last time I updated this data? And then from here, I actually have my response body um, and I have that kind of specified to just kind of let me know when the last um, time I updated the data. And if that was too far away or if it doesn't quite work, we can actually default to one day ago if no records are found. And then from here, I actually um, have the have a catch that will let me know if there's any errors fetching the data or anything like that. And then from here, I can actually have an async function that fetches the NASA data, um, connects to the URL in the same way, and then passes in the parameters. Um, it will also kind of have today and format that date correctly. And then it also will make the request. And if there's any issues, I'll let you know. And then from here, we actually can create the structured data just the same way we did before, and then load everything into Elasticsearch. And this should look very similar to what we did in the previous step. I'm using a different index just to outline the differences between the two. So for the purposes of this function app, we're using NAS and Node.js. Um, and this is the same function that kind of runs every day. It loads the new data in if there's anything. And then from here, um, instead of a main function, we'll actually just use this Azure function entry point. And so from here, this my timer that runs every day. Um, and then from here, we can actually save this to be the last update date. And then from here, we actually um, can see, you know, when was the last time that it was updated? Um, and we can also see from here um, if we need to fetch the data. And then if we do, we can like catch that structured data, create that, and then print out how many records are being uploaded. And then from here, um, it will store the data in a variable. And um, yeah, and then from there, it will index the structured data um, and let you know if the data was indexed successfully or if there's no new data to index. And then from there, if there's an issue, it will let you know. Um, there will, there's also just if there is an error in the run process, it will let you know what that error is. And so from here, if you press test and run, we can actually run this real quick just to kind of show what this looks like. So if we press run, it looks like it does kind of let you know the last time that it was updated, which was yesterday. And then from here, it actually will walk you through, you know, getting all that data in. And so we can actually see that in here. Um, and it lets us know that the data was successfully indexed. And then from here, um, we can actually um, go into this function.json. And so from here, this is where it sets up the timing. So that my timer that was referenced, um, we set this up to run every day at 10 o'clock. Um, and yeah, this will run and it, I've had no problems thus far. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, at this point, now you should know how to update data into an Elasticsearch index once and how to keep it updated with an Azure function app. Um, you could check out the full code on our Search Labs GitHub repository, which has an example of our .env file, um, the Azure index.js file, um, the function, the package.js, um, the function.json and um, the original loading data into an index file as well. Um, so yeah, let us know if you have any questions on our community forums, uh, our discuss or our Slack. Um, and thanks so much for watching and have a great day. We also have lots of great content on our Elasticsearch Labs um, blog. So be sure to check out all of our content there. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.